Hey, Dan here with Sweet Maria's. For today's bullet roast profile video, I am going to roast the Espresso Monkey blend. Espresso Monkey is one of our most popular blends, and it's also probably one of our oldest. Um, Espresso Monkey has become a bit of a signature blend for us, and at one point in time, we even had apparel, uh, shirts and sweatshirts with the little Espresso Monkey logo on it and little demi toss cups. I'm sure some of you remember those. Um, but today I'm gonna roast uh, the blend. And this uh, coffee is a blend of um, wet and dry processed coffees from Ethiopia, um, Central America, and South America. So we typically have an Ethiopian dry process coffee and a dry process Brazil. And then the Central American coffee varies uh, throughout the year. My goal with this roast is to take it almost up to second crack in the drum, achieving just a few second snaps in the tray. So I want to pull out uh, a real intense bitter sweetness, but I don't want to cover up some of the fruit flavors that come from the dry process Ethiopian component. Um, I think one of the things that is uh, most enticing about this blend to me is that there's this mix of bitter sweetness uh, that actually has like a sharp intensity to it at Full City Plus, as well as an undercurrent of fruited flavors from that uh, dry process ingredient. to the rocks glass. Now what is this grinder we're using? Is this an anthem? It's ancient, right? Yeah, that's a, a paste. compact. Oh, that's a compact. Yeah. It's still a little bit fast for my taste, to be quite honest, but... Yeah. You're a ristretto guy. Yeah. 22 seconds. I okay. did not weigh it. Okay. But, you know, that's what we're working with right Look now. Look at all that crema. Woo! If that was an indicator of goodness, this is a pretty good shot. Um, yeah, when I started in coffee, if we got any crema, we were excited. We get a little bit of ring in crema in the 19... ever, but it, 80s. Um, it's sweeter, I think, actually, than the last shot. Yeah. Okay. You know, the review for Monkey uh, does indicate a bit of fruit and I think I get fruit in this but not as much as when I'm pulling yeah like a shorter shot um it has an Ethiopia dry process component in it and that's mm -hmm. where most of that sort of fruity flavor comes from but I did take this roast to the dark side so it wasn't quite rolling second snaps um I set out to hit second crack in the tray and I definitely hit second crack in the drum and in a, mm -hmm. a little bit faster than I had hoped for so you did three roasts, yeah. and um, and this was just for fun. I think you were saying maybe you'll go back to Seattle and do a few more roasts or something just to see. Yeah, I think the biggest change I would make in that roast profile is that instead of, you know, for roasting one pound of uh, this blend, instead of having my default roast setting at P9, so the hottest setting, I would start at a P8 and kind of okay. drag it out a little bit because I this roast finished at... Um, second crack at around 425 in eight and a half minutes it was pretty fast oh that's yeah. very fast really yeah fast, so. well i was i was kind of charging the bullet higher and bringing it down um because i find you know that i can't and how many how much what was i'm sorry what was the batch capacity you were using i used one pound and it was 15.1 percent loss so it's about full it means full city plus okay yeah. okay um yeah it's funny, we talk about, you know, I mean, I think charge temp makes a big difference in how, uh, you know, in how your roasts track. Mm -hmm. um, but by the time I get got to this roast, and any time I'm really roasting at home, I'm, it's usually the second roast is what my real roast is. The first is my warm-up. Yeah. And that second roast is, a am roasting back-to-back. -back. The roaster's quite a bit hotter than my charge temp, you know? I'm finishing at 410, 415, and that's when I'm dropping my yeah. back, rather than... My first roast is really the only one that sees a 401 degree Fahrenheit charge temp, yeah. which is what I said. I mean, I think all the drum roasters, I can't believe that just whatever the drum air temperature is measuring, that the heated metals and stuff aren't having an impact. So that 
whenever we're roasting on our probat roaster downstairs or even on our, our sample, our sample roaster. roaster, we're always doing a first batch that's a, uh, you know, just brew for downstairs or something. It's not like our real roasting until we get to our second batch. So, um, what, so you're pretty happy with this? I think that it's it's got it's really showing a lot of the fruit and chocolate. I think, given that it's so fresh and especially being so fresh yeah. from the bullet, which I think has more gas still in the coffee, meaning it needs more rest, and especially for espresso, you know, like four days plus yeah. um, to get to the the best um, the best extraction. Mm -hmm. I think that you get. Um, yeah. So this is, I think, doing pretty well, and I think it's it's clean. It's got um, some brightness and mm -hmm. fruit and chocolate, and it's doing everything I'd want it to do. I just think uh, tweaking the roast profile and um, slowing it down a bit and um, some more rest would be amazing. And I yeah. think our shots would be easier to pull, too. Yeah. But I'm not very talented with <laughs> I think we should come back and try this again in a few days and maybe even add a little follow-up to this. Okay, yeah, that'd be interesting. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Um, here we are a week later, uh, just pulled another shot of the same roast of Espresso Monkey Blend with a seven days rest. And it's tasting really nice. Um, I do find the shot to be a bit more chocolate, like sharp chocolate flavor. Um, high percentage cacao bar kind of bitter sweetness maybe not quite as much fruit as we got um last week when it was still pretty fresh but i think this is really nice and would make an amazing cappuccino at this roast level i did take another pass on my roaster here in seattle yesterday uh starting off the roast at p8 instead of p9 and i had a lot nicer roast curve i changed the intervals at which i pulled back on heat and increased the fan speed which pushed my overall roast time just beyond 10 minutes. Although it did wind up being a little bit lighter uh, roast level than the first pass. So let's go ahead and try that shot. I'm really happy with how this second pass went. Um, the roast is a little bit lighter, maybe not quite as light as uh, it looks um, at first glance. Um, this batch was roasted on my uh, bullet here in Seattle, which I hit first crack temp um, almost 10 degrees uh, cooler than the um, than the the bullet at uh, Sweet Maria's in Oakland, um, but still, it's uh, my finish time was probably um, eight or nine degrees uh, cooler on my second pass. Um, although that uh, development time was a bit longer, so you're still getting a lot of the really nice um, chocolate bitter sweetness in this, but I, I also get a bit more fruit and just very slight acidity. Um, I mean, at this roast level, it's not going to be a bright shot, but it definitely um, has a little bit more acidity than the um, shot that we tried last week. And the current the current monkey blend, because it does change, but it's been very stable for a long time, and we make changes to the review if there's any change. But the the general spirit of the idea is always... Uh, it's dry process Ethiopia, dry process Brazil, and then a, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a washed Central American. I should say dry process African, dry process Brazil, usually, I mean, pretty right. much always. And then a washed Central American coffee for a little bit of acidity. Mm -hmm. and right now it's a Guatemala. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's always interesting with blends. It's like, is your goal to make the blend always taste the same? Or is your goal to make the blend as good as it can be? given what the idea is behind the blend. And I, I'm i more of the make it as good as it can be. Um, you know, so if you find a particular dry process Ethiopian that really works well. I mean, we definitely don't choose for, for monkey blend the ones that are kind of more outlandishly, for, for you know, not I don't want to say fermenty, but well, those they, don't go into this blend. Nothing that's really wild fruit. And also none of the ones that are cut more like a washed Ethiopia. So right. the high in acidity. Um, we want it to yeah. be rustic and natural, but not like overpower the cup, yeah. because I think that ingredient can, the Brazil's not gonna overpower the cup. Um, but, um, so yeah, that's a little about monkey bullet roasting. Um, so you're gonna show the curves probably.
yeah. and what you did, and then if you do it another try at it to to, to slow down the initial charge temp and kind of mm -hmm. um, yeah. I may have already shown them, depending on how I edit this video. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's great. Thanks for doing the roast. I think yeah. it's really good. Thanks for watching.